everyone, I'm Jessica Stutzman and welcome back to the Mill Creek Government Channel. The Erie Horror Fest is back at the Warner Theater this fall in downtown Erie for scares, thrills, and rare encounters. The 2023 event will be oozing with films, vendors, workshops, panels, celebrity guests, and so much more. Here to talk with us from the Erie Horror Fest is Margaret Diadone, committee member for the Erie Horror Fest. Margaret, thank you so much for being here with me today. Of course. I'm so excited to chat about this special event. We've never had you on, or your organization, on the Mill Creek Government Channel before, mm -hmm. but I really love Halloween and everything <laughs> that this represents. So let's get into talking about this particular genre of film. Why horror films and why does it bring people together? So I always like to say horror just encapsulates everything, mm -hmm. right? Because we're human. so one of the key aspects of being human is being scared, mm -hmm. fear. So a lot of horror films, what I love about it is it really can show the variety of things that actually will make us scared and how it's dependent person to person. Mm -hmm. Like for some people, there's a film that they're like, oh, it's not scary, it's not even a horror film at all. But for others, it really freaks them out. Mm -hmm. Like for me, there's a film called The Descent where it talks about people going caving. Mm -hmm. For me, that's a huge fear of mine, mm -hmm. right? Just total lack of access to anything. Mm -hmm. But for other people, they're like, what do you mean? Yeah. They go do this all the time. They go spelunking all the time. Yeah. So it's really cool. So that's what I, I really like about horror and why for the film festival we decided to focus on that. It really gets to show a nice range of what a filmmaker can do and even how for different cultures, what to them can seem, be seen as horror. Mm -hmm. And you know what that reminds me of when you're watching or you're going to a movie with somebody and you're like, is it gory or is it psychological? Exactly. And that's kind of what we're talking about here. Exactly, okay. exactly. There's so many aspects to it. Yeah, and so how long have you been on the committee? I've been on the committee for three years. Mm -hmm. I started as very much a volunteer. Mm -hmm. It was through a friend of a friend. It was very much kismet. And so I said, hey, you know, I'm, I'd be interested in volunteering with this. Mm -hmm. So they brought me on, um, Erica specifically, mm -hmm. and she said, hey, I think you'd be a great fit. Mm -hmm. And so I told her of all the things that I would be interested in, what I've done so far. And then throughout the years, not only have they listened to my feedback, they've really empowered me and said, you know, Margaret, we love what you're bringing to the table. So we'd like you to continue volunteering with us. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of creativity. Yes. <laughs> yes. Wonderful. What can attendees expect this year, maybe versus last year? I'd say compared to last year, we're trying to really work on a lot of the feedback we've gotten from our attendees. One of the feedback was actually with, related to our vendors specifically, where they said, hey, we like what you have, but we want to see even more physical media options. So we actually really targeted to ensure that we had vendors that would be more related to that, mm -hmm. such as Severin. And they focus on physical media where they have different items from pretty much all over the world. Mm -hmm. um, so that was one aspect that we really tried to work on to improve on, mm -hmm. as well as just logistics of items. We really wanted to make sure people felt comfortable. So pretty much any feedback we got from last year, we really worked on that. Mm -hmm. And what is, how many people, I guess, do you expect to attend? We expect anywhere from hundreds, if not thousands of people mm -hmm. to attend. Um, last year we had easily over 500 people attend our opening night. Wow, and does it help to play on eerie being eerie? You oh, know, it's so that, nice. Okay, good. <laughs> it's just like, a, it's a pun that was just waiting to happen. It was. No, but it's really helpful. And honest, it even helps for our brand too, mm -hmm. to, so that way people know, oh yeah, eerie associated with eerie. It's, it's not like we don't have our own spooky history too. Mm -hmm. So that's what I really like about it. I love that. And we do have a lot of spooky history. Mm -hmm. I know we were talking before and I've done a ton of ghost tours and things like that. So yes. um, I'm not into the gore end of horror films, but I do like the ghost story end yes. of horror films. So. Um, can you tell us more about opening night? So opening night, this is actually gonna take place in the lobby of the Warner Theater to start off with. We're gonna have an opening night party. So this is gonna take place from five to 7 p.m. We're gonna have food there catered from various vendors such as Cafe 710, as well as Cali's West. So what we always recommend to people is if you wanna come by, go to the party first so this week you can even have a nice meal, get some drinks from the bar. And in addition to that, our DJ is gonna be T DJ Tina Romero, DJ Trix. And she's actually the daughter of George Romero. George Romero is a uh, filmmaker from Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. The cool thing about that is we're actually gonna be showing one of his films later on that same night at 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. called Night of the Living Dead. Also filmed in Pittsburgh. So it's a really nice local connection. Mm -hmm. And uh, Tina is gonna be providing an introduction to the film, you know, on behalf of her father as well as in conjunction with the uh, George A. Romero Foundation 
And what is going to be really cool about this, not only are we showing the film, but we're also going to have a group called Morricone Youth. Mm -hmm. They're going to do a live score as we're showing the film. Wow. So we really like these kind of interactive way of showing films, the way that to engage all of your senses. I was just going to say that I did see once um, a film and they had, you know, the orchestra playing at the same time as the mm -hmm. film and you were like engulfed in the sound. It yes. wasn't just like surround sound, but you were engulfed in it like because exactly. you saw the people playing in front of you. That's incredibly and, mm -hmm. and incredible. And I and I want to make a point that the Warner Theater is so historic. Is that yes. why you chose it or was there other great benefits to choosing the Warner? That's one of the benefits. I mean, the other side is just logistics too since the Warner is working with Erie Events, so they coordinate a lot of the logistics. They give us a lot of really good insight and help whenever we want to plan an event. So that was already nice. But the Warner Theater itself, like you said, it's so historic. There are even tours, spooky tours yes. that happen at the Warner. And I always love when I go in, I really feel like I'm taken back in time. Mm -hmm. I always say, say that they should be making a period piece mm -hmm. involving the Warner. Right, that it just feels like you're taken back to a place and it's really taking it back to its roots of you're getting able to, you're able to expose yourself to more culture, to see movies. And I just love that about the Warner. Yeah, it's magical the way that, you know, and again, the way that film, the way that, you know, the creativity and all of this plays. Um, to your experience, yes. to your senses, mm -hmm. and it sets like the, the ambiance for you know the whole rest of um, your event. Exactly. Um, and it sounds like we could be having people travel from other cities yes. to this. Do we have a lot of outer towners join um, Erie Horror Fest? Oh, a hundred percent. We have people coming in from actually all over the U.S., if not even all over the world. Mm -hmm. Just from our film submissions, we receive submissions from twenty-five countries. Wow over 200 submissions because we are a film festival too mm -hmm. where not only do we show classic films or new horror films we also want to highlight new works from filmmakers mm -hmm. so this at least gives us a way to help them to even expose themselves and say hey this is a great piece of work mm -hmm. that you have and we really want to make sure we highlight that oh, that's absolutely fantastic um, I just want to move on here so we can get through everything what can you tell us about Claudio Simonetti's Goblin Yes, so Claudio Simonetti, he was one of the original founders of a group called Goblin. They're what I would call a progressive rock band. Um, many of the members, past and present, are Italian. Claudio Simonetti himself, he was actually born in Brazil, but um, of Italian descent. So he has that really cool, interesting mix of cultures just for himself. Mm -hmm. And he's a composer for many horror films, such as Suspiria, Dawn of the Dead, was actually also made by George Romero. Um, so it's really nice when you get to hear his work. Even this morning, I was actually listening to it again, you know, just to mm -hmm. get me in the mood. Yes. And I was like, wow, this is like spooky, but it also hypes you up mm -hmm. in a way. So um, that's what's actually really nice about it. And because we've been looking into a lot of his work, we actually got in contact with his team and he was traveling in Europe, but he's gonna be coming to North America as a part of his tour in 2023. So the Erie Horror Fest, the Warner Theater, were actually an official part of his tour. Wow. Um, and that's gonna be on Saturday, October 7th. So not only is Goblin going to be performing, it's gonna be a mix of a lot of their big scores and they're gonna show clips from a lot of those films at the same time. That is super neat. This probably takes a lot of people on the back end to coordinate all yes. of this. What is what is your staff or your team or the volunteers? What does that look like? It's incredible. I, I always say the team is incredible. We have a staff of what we would call leadership of um, five people. Mm -hmm. So these are various people we meet every week, pretty much since the last fest ended in October 22. We've met every week. Mm -hmm. Now, is this your full-time job, or does, does everybody have a full-time job and they're doing this as a passion? This is a passion okay. job. It's truly <laughs> a passion job. I have another job yes, that I exactly. work with. I work as an engineer, mm -hmm. but this is something that I've been very interested in, and all of us, we said, you know what? We know, of course, it's gonna take additional time, mm -hmm. but what we wanted to do was, how do we make sure we bring things like this to Erie, mm -hmm. right? So it's not even just leadership. We even have committees underneath leadership. Mm -hmm. So we have, honestly, around 20 people working on this all year round, mm -hmm. let alone volunteers that help us during the actual fest. Mm -hmm. This is our way of also letting people from Erie just you can get more involved, get ideas, so that way we're just a starting point, right? But we want to see even more things like this in Erie. So this is our contribution. Yes, I mm -hmm. think this sounds super fun. So I don't want to jump around, but if someone is watching this and they want to contribute and be involved either on the day of or all year round, how do they do that? Uh, yes, we actually have a volunteer application on our website. If you go to eriehorrorfest.com, so once you, and Erie to East, 
<laughs> so once you go there, um, you can fill out the application, and this is a way for you to at least definitely sign up for the fest itself. Mm -hmm. I'd say if you want to be able to participate in maybe a more committee aspect, planning year-round, I'd say we have, you can contact our um, communications and marketing director. Mm -hmm. Her email, Amanda, is on the website. So that way you can communicate with her and then she'll put you in touch with the right person on how you can now participate within the full year. That's great. Um, so let's talk about the vendors. You kind of yes. mentioned them a little bit already. Who can we expect to see? So yes, like I said, you can expect to see Severin. Mm -hmm. I'd say also expect to see lots of artwork. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be a mix of spooky, maybe, you know, I always like to say horror encompasses everything, right? So it's like spooky, gory, all of the above. Mm -hmm. Expect to see that. You also see um, we have someone that's going to be making kind of spooky dolls. That's mm -hmm. going to be there as well. Um, little aspects of jewelry that will be there. And we're also going to have um, different groups that will have their table there as well. So like Erie Comic Con mm -hmm. will have their table there. The George J. Ramiro Foundation will have a table there. And that's one small aspect of the various vendors we're going to have. Yes. Oh, that sounds incredible. And it is funny how in horror and you know spooky films how often dolls are incorporated I know, you know I I've, know. I've like I said been on some ghost tours and I've I have visited some of um, the inspiration for the Chucky doll I visited yes. that in Key West um, and I will never forget it so. <laughs> it's actually so funny you mentioned doll too because we're going to be showing Megan mm -hmm. during the fest that's incredible yes oh I just love this it's getting better and better <laughs> um, okay so how do you guys oh did, and did we mention let's mention the date one more time for the yes. Erie Horror Fest. Yes, it's going to be October 4th through the 7th, mm -hmm. and our full schedule is going to be on our website uh, shortly, but I'd say we definitely have key events that we already are starting to advertise, mm -hmm. such as our opening night party and Night of the Living Dead on Wednesday, and Saturday is going to be the Claudio Simonetti's Goblin Concert, mm -hmm. and in between we have themes for each day. Okay, mm -hmm. and what age range would you think is Erie uh, Erie Horror Fest appropriate for? You think for children, teenagers, adults, who, who is your target audience? I would say we definitely still leave this up to the parents. Mm -hmm. We will be showing some films that will be considered as PG-13, rated mm -hmm. R. We, that is something we do definitely do plan on putting on our website as a FYI. Mm -hmm. It has been actually a very nice surprise though that many kids are really into horror. Mm -hmm. Seems like the younger they are, the more they're just not really scared by it. They just think it's kind of funny. Yeah. Um, but I'd say we are open to all ages, but on Saturday in the morning, we actually are trying to have a very, a lot more of a family focused day. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be showing Hocus Pocus in the morning. We're also gonna have a bit of an on-site trick-or-treating. Mm -hmm. So that is at least a way to help bridge the middle ground of something that's maybe not as scary, but still considered as horror and fun mm -hmm. for the family. That is one of my favorite films. <laughs> one of my favorite. And you know, I was just saying, I don't do that spooky, but right. oh gosh, that's a good one. Yes. Um, how are you gonna keep the spooky spirit alive all year round? So we have quite a few things. One of our biggest programs is actually called Erie Horror Fest Presents. Mm -hmm. So this is a monthly series where we kind of touch on upon a theme for horror each month. Mm -hmm. And this is led by Dr. Rhonda, Math Rhonda Matthews. She's actually a sociology professor. And what she does, she creates effectively a curriculum. Mm -hmm. So you get to go to a location. Uh, currently we have it at room 33, mm -hmm. where you go, have some drinks, eat, and you get to talk to many like-minded people. So for example, we've talked about zombies and even mm -hmm. what would be the place to hide in Erie during mm -hmm. a zombie apocalypse, oh right? Like these are yes. kind of topics that we bring up. So it's nothing mm -hmm. scary, but we at least get to talk, you know, and see, oh, I didn't, I never would have thought of that when watching that film. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's just like so much, you know, there's so much that comes from it. You know, yes. there's, you know, you watch those favorite films and you're like, what would I do? If I were right. put in that position, right. where would I go? What would I, you know, what would I bring with me? What, <laughs> you know, like I, when you just said that, my first thought was a grocery store. I know, like, I was actually, like, I need food. That was a key one. Was grocery it? store and okay. the mall. And the mall. Clothing, mm -hmm. food. Mm -hmm. I got it. That makes perfect sense. Yes. Okay. Um, we did chat about why you chose the Warner Theater, and do you think that the Horror Fest has things for, and we kind of talked about the, the um, younger audience, right. but do you think that there's um, material for the horror-minded and non-horror fans alike? So I always say, I think, honestly, pretty much everyone is probably a fan of horror and uh -huh. they don't realize it. Yeah. You know, just maybe certain aspects. But mm -hmm. of course, if you're very much like, that's not for me, mm -hmm. we actually do have many things for you. In addition to showing films, we're gonna have workshops, we're gonna have industry panels. So these are people that we have all have worked with throughout mm -hmm. the past 10 or 20 years. We ask them to come to Erie and give advice on 
what would you want to do if you want to break into the film industry mm -hmm. or even TV industry? Mm -hmm. And then in addition to that, we have a pitch competition. So we'll have filmmakers provide a pitch to an audience as well as a panel, and they were, they're going to be able to give them advice and say, if you want to be able to make your film, these are things that you would need to do. Mm -hmm. So that's one aspect. But yes, we do try to have many things. Mm -hmm. Actually, we're going to have food trucks this year, multiple food trucks each day. Mm -hmm. We have partnerships with local um, businesses like Rose Cafe, mm -hmm. Voodoo. So we definitely have many activities. Even if you're not a fan of horror, mm -hmm. you definitely can keep yourself busy there. Oh, wonderful. And so again, tell, us, tell everybody where they can um, sign up for tickets. Yes, um, I always say you can go to the Erie Events website. That's mm -hmm. the main location to buy your tickets. If in case you have any questions about the different types we have, you can go to the Erie Horror Fest website first, mm -hmm. and we have a tab called p uh, Passes. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we redirect you to the Erie Events website to buy your tickets. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Are there any other thoughts that you want to share with our viewers um, before you go today? Because this has been such a fun interview. <laughs> You know, but I just, I love, I love this. This is so cultural and, and artistic. And, you know, you were just bringing up about these panels, but there's so much to film, the film industry, mm -hmm. than just actors and directors. Exactly. You know, so I'm sure that's something that's been brought to light for you. Yes. Working behind the scenes. Honestly, it's been really refreshing. Mm -hmm. And like you said, there's, because that's who we see, right? Mm -hmm. We see the directors, we see the actors, but we never think about the writers, who's creating the screenplay, mm -hmm. or who's even doing the special effects, mm -hmm. oh, right? For example, our local artist, Mark Kasabuck, you call him Monster Mark, mm -hmm. he actually had a workshop last year about special effects, mm -hmm. so that was really nice. Does that include like stunt doubles and? Not yet. Not yet. But you oh, know okay. what? We I feel can. like that before I, you know, before I, I injured my knee, I feel like I would have been a stunt double. Maybe oh, that would be my other life. I know. I always love yeah. that. What's your other life? Yeah. Mm. Um, okay. Well, thank you so, so much. I, again, one more time, the website and where people can reach out for more information because this is so mm -hmm. cool. Yes. The website is eeriehorrorfest2es.com, and there you can have information about the passes, website, the date, mm -hmm. and we'll always will continuously be announcing any new guests that we have. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Margaret, for being here today and sharing this with us. Of course, thank you. Viewers, we have a really fun event coming up that is tailored perfectly to Erie, and that's the Erie Horror Fest. So I hope that you got a lot of details and you join us downtown for this amazing event. It's just going to get bigger and better every single year. We mentioned the website a couple times, but I really think it would be a fun event, again, for adults or for the family, and you're gonna enjoy it. Thank you for tuning into the Milk Creek Government Channel, and until next time, have a great day.